Welcome back to an all-new edition of the His and Her Money Show with America's number one money couple. I'm Talit. And I'm Ty. And we're from HisAndHerMoney.com where we're managing money, marriage, and everything in between. We're so glad that you guys came back here for another great edition of the show because we have another awesome debt-free story in store for you. An incredibly inspirational story. We're going to be talking with a young lady by the name of Nasima, and she has paid off multiple six figures worth of debt. Yeah, that much debt. <laughs> she has been putting in the work yeah. and she has been so focused and so determined to get out of what is mostly a bunch of student loan debt. And for those of you who are struggling with student loans, definitely want to tune in to this one. Yeah, and you know what? I love her story because she had some obstacles along the way, but she did not let them deter her. She continued to strive full force ahead to become debt free. So let's take a listen to her story. Hey, Nasima, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hey, Nasima. Hi, how are you guys doing? I'm excited to be here. <laughs> we are awesome. glad to have you here with us because you are in the midst of a battle against debt and yeah. you are winning. That's right. You are kicking debts behind and we are glad to have you on the show to talk about it and inspire others to do the same. But before we get into your story, can you take a moment and introduce yourself to our audience and let them know what you're all about? Sure. So I'm Yasima. I am a registered nurse and a family nurse practitioner, which I don't really use. But <laughs> I'm a nurse and I have a two-year-old daughter. And, you know, not a lot, but I just really, really working really hard to pay down all this these school loans mostly that I have and just trying to bring people along the journey with me because I would never have thought it was possible. And, you know, I like to inspire my friends and, and inspire my friends. Maybe I can inspire someone else. So that's all. That's all I'm about. So let's talk about the debt. How much debt was in total? I know that you said that it was just, was it, was it just totally all student loans or did you have other debt and where are you at currently in the process? So it was a whole lot of things. And honestly, when I started this journey, I didn't even consider my school loans debt, which is crazy, right? So um, I had over, when I added everything up, once I finally realized what debt I had, I had over $300,000 in debt. I haven't done the whole math, but because I just can't. <laughs> But I, um, the first thing I had was school loans was over $200,000. I have two master's degrees. I have a, a master's in healthcare administration and also a master's in nursing. And um, the other day I had a house in, um, in LA that I was my first house when I was in graduate school. And um, then I had um, a 403B loan, which helped me purchase this house. I had um, bought a new car because I commute. So, of course, I needed a commuter car because I didn't want to put miles on my main car. And then when I got married, um, he had some debt, too, that he brought in. Um, but I'm currently going through a divorce. So I'm not married anymore. So, well, I'm going through a divorce. <laughs> so those are, those are pretty much um, my debts. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, yeah. So, so where are you currently at in the in the process? How long have you been trying to knock out these this debt? And so how much are you roughly um, at currently? So right now, roughly, I've paid off um, over two hundred and seventy thousand dollars in debt. You you paid it off? Yeah, paid down two hundred and seventy thousand. And I have I just made a payment the other day. And so I'm under fifty thousand dollars in debt which I'm really happy about because I didn't want it to go into the new year under 50,000. That was my goal. Um, and, and I've done this all since uh, Mar uh, April of 2015, which is 20 months. What? What? Let me go get a calculator wow. real quick. Man, hold up. Wow. I mean, I, I think we're just going to have to ask a question now because I'm sure everybody's probably like, okay, how did you do that? $270,000. How much in, is that per month in 20 months? In 20 months. Don't do that math. Okay. My wife has but, a calculator did, in her brain. How did you do that? Okay, let me tell you how it all started because it didn't start like I was intentionally trying to pay off debt. 
So what happened was is that I, I my house in my condo in Inglewood, I was tired of dealing with um like it's a, it was an old condo. So I was like, I need to sell it. I had tenants there. I, you know, I was not trying to be a long distance landlord. And so I was like, okay, I knew that when I sold it, I was gonna, I was gonna gain about a hundred thousand dollars. So I was like, cool. Now I just need to know how I'm gonna invest this money because you know I'm behind on my investments. So let me go research some, you know, financial investment podcasts and things like that because I need to know, learn more about investing because that's one area I wasn't very confident in. And so I Googled the top three financial podcasts and of course Dave Ramsey came up, right? And so I listened to the Dave Ramsey show and I was like, this is crazy. Like, what well, this dude don't know nothing about what I got going on over here. He don't know nothing about this two hundred thousand dollars student loan debt. He's talking about paying off all your student loans. I'm on a loan forgiveness program. I'm not even worried about that debt over there. I'm just trying to see how I can make more money with this money that I have. And so I started listening more and more, and I was like, wait a minute, this kind of makes sense. So. I, like I said, I did start paying off my loans in April, but it wasn't until I was listening and I was struggling and I was like, why? I can't understand why I would pay off this $200,000 and why that make, why that would make sense at all. Like when I'm on this 10 year loan repayment program, but at that time, my, my um, monthly payment a month was like $1,900. So it's not like I was like, I wasn't, it wasn't like a small pain. It was pretty high. So, um, and then another thing I was struggling with was I had my commuter car, you know, when he talks about, you know, having these cars and even though it wasn't half of my take home income, it was like, it was excess. Like I didn't really need this little car. So I was driving to work late when I work at night and um, I was turning into the parking lot at my job and a car T-boned me. But right before that car T-boned me, um, there was a debt-free scream on there. And she had almost exactly the same amount of student loan that I had. And she said, I did the math. And it didn't make sense to me to be paying these payments over 10 years when I could just pay it off. And when I heard that, it clicked like, oh, okay, this makes sense. And so I'm turning in and I'm like, thank you, God, for this clarity, because that's exactly what I needed. So now I have my clarity about my loan. And then the car T-boned me and totaled out my commuter car. So <laughs> then I was like, the two things I was worried about, God just told me, listen, you got to get rid of these things, this loan and this car. So when I, um, the car was relative, it was brand new. I brought a brand new car. So um, I got a pretty big check for that car after um, it got totaled out. So once I got that check, it really propelled me further into paying down my loans. And that's when I got gazelle intense. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So did, did you sell the condo? I did sell the condo. So I sold the condo. So the condo sold um, in, at the end of March. And that's why I started in April. So at, right away, like I said, I didn't think my student loans was dead. So right away, I paid off my 403B loan. I paid off that brand new car. So it was all paid off um, because that's what I thought was dead. And uh, what other? I, it was one more thing I had to pay for. But I, I don't remember exactly. But um, yeah, so I paid those things down. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to have a substantial savings. You know, so it took me a while. So I had that money still sitting in my account. I was like, Dave is tripping. Like, I am not about to take my emergency fund down to a thousand dollars. But then I was like, well, before this, I didn't even have any savings. So a thousand dollars would be a lot of money. So let me just let me just stop playing and get serious. So and as soon as I got serious, um, it made that big of a difference. But really, really, really what made the big difference is me finally figuring out how to budget. That was like the biggest thing. Because before I used to think I, I could budget, I could get, I got net.com on my, 
I the mint app on my phone, you know, so I'm going through tracking all my transactions. You know, I got an extra four hundred dollars a month. That's cool. You know, but like I said, I never had any savings. That money would just come in and out of my account. But then when I started to budget for the first time, I actually found I actually had extra four thousand dollars in my account left over, which I didn't even think was possible because when I went from to when I bought this house, I went from having my rent was like fifteen hundred dollars a month to paying over four thousand dollars a month in rent. And so I was like, I didn't have any extra money. That's what I thought until I really, really sat down and did the numbers. And that's what made the difference. Actually getting down the zero based budgeting process. Wow. Yeah, the budget does make a difference. What was the toughest part? Because you said you thought you had this whole budgeting thing figured out, but then you went from once you like like you said, buckled down and really got to it, you went from having four hundred dollars extra to four thousand. What was the toughest part of learning how to really budget and how were you able to kind of get yourself to that place? Um it was just trial and error. Like uh, if you listen, listen to Dave Ramsey, he says it takes a good three months to really get your budget down. And that's what really happened. Like trying to figure out exactly like what category things went in, like how to do this budget, how to spend this money. Actually, I, and then how to communicate with my husband about how to spend money and those kind of things. And so once we fine tune that um, and that's just it's just straight up trial and error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about the mindset that you had to put yourself in once you finally said, okay, you know, you got T-boned in the car and then you finally decided, okay, I'm, I'm going to sell this condo and I'm going to take money and um, now I'm going to attack this debt. Talk about the mindset that you had to put yourself in in order to accomplish that. Um, I think one of the biggest things is uh, being intentional. And that's why my side is called financially intentional. Like you really have to be intentional. You have to know why you're doing something in order for you to make progress in doing it. So, you know, my why was, I don't ever want my baby to have to struggle. Like I had to struggle. Um, I was the first person in my, in my um, family to really go to the academic levels that I went to, went through. So I didn't have anybody to tell me, you know, don't take out these loans. I never even knew that that was a possibility. I mean, when you're in high school, when they do financial aid workshops, all they do is talk about loans and all this kind of stuff. So you don't even really know that anything else is possible. So um, just being intentional and just figuring out, okay, why am I doing this? What are my goals? And the thing about Dave Ramsey that I like so much is that he doesn't just focus on like getting rich, like getting your money together. And that's it. It's a long term plan. And like seeing that trajectory laid out and actually having to um, talk about covering your insurance right now, covering wills and, and everything like that, it all made sense to me. And so once I was like, OK, I, I have a plan that's not only for, for me, but for my that's going to propel me away into my future and is going to help my daughter. I was, I was on board. Yeah, I like that. I think you hit a point there that is rarely talked about. And that's be first to ascend to a certain level, whether that's academic, whether that's financially and not really having a blueprint to look at a roadmap or a role model to kind of build yourself after. That's that's a problem that a lot of people are probably facing right now. And that gets a lot of people in trouble because they go to school, they get the degree, they get this great job. Now they've got money that they've never had before yeah. and they their, their mentality hasn't changed mm -hmm. from the struggle that they used to be in. So now that they have money, it's like, let me get this, let me get this, let me get this, let me get this. And then they end up in a bad, bad spot. So talk to that person. What advice would you give them if they didn't, you, they're in a place where you found yourself like, man... I got to figure this out on my own. What would you tell them? How, how should they go about figuring this out and being financially intentional? <laughs> you know what? I think, and I think one point I want to make is that um, a lot of people think that making it or being financially stable is about what your credit score is. And that's what I had to learn the hard way is that, you know, we do all these things to build up our credit and, that's that doesn't mean anything. If you make a hundred thousand dollars or you make 
five hundred dollars a year, you can have a high credit score. Um, that, and it doesn't matter how much money you have in savings. None of that stuff matters. Um, and so to get people out of that mindset. But the thing is, is that, uh, and I think a lot of thing, a lot of what holds a lot of people back is because they have not found their why. Like they don't necessarily understand why they need to get out of debt or why debt is bad. And so you have to come to a place where you're saying, okay, look, I'm sick and tired of bringing all this money home or bringing whatever money home and not having any money at the end of the month. And once you get to that point, there's things out there that can help you. This plan that I'm on is, is very simple. It's very straightforward, but you know, it, it has very, very good results. And so you know, I say, you know, figure out what your why is. You got to get to that point on your own. I can't tell you, you know, this is going to help you because you have to be willing to do that on your own. And um, just start, start a plan, stick to it, and you'll be all right. Love it. Now, were there any obstacles along the way um, during this uh, journey while you're still even on this journey. I know that you mentioned in the beginning of the interview, you're currently going through a divorce and talk about, has that affected, um, your, uh, your progress and continuing to pay off this debt? Um, that's an obstacle, um, financially because now I don't have help at home. So I have to pay a lot more for daycare. I think I spend over $2,000 a month just to take care of my daughter. I work at night, so I have to have somebody here, a lot. Um, so that affected it. Um, you know, just actually having like a plan and having intentionality about where I want to go actually helped me because, um, uh, it through this process, because even with this going on, I still know that there's things that I have to achieve. And so it kind of just made me, made me focus in on my goals. Um, and just know that if I didn't have these things in place, it could have really affected me a lot more in going through this process because, uh, you know, going through the divorce can, it's, it's a battle, especially financially. But, you know, I have all my ducks in a row. And so that helped me get through this. And, yeah. Yeah, no, I think you bring up a very good point. And that's something that we teach um, even in our financial message that life happens and we don't know the future. We don't know what the future may bring. Um, some people, it may be a birth for a, a child may disrupt, uh, you know, the finances or maybe a spouse gets laid off or someone has to come home or even like in your case, a divorce. And so I think that that's I, I like what you said. You know, if you didn't have this already in place and a plan and a goal, things could have been much worse. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, I'm curious. You, you talk about the obstacle that you're up against and how it's not easy. And it's a good thing that you had certain things in place or else uh, a tough dis a tough situation could have been a disastrous situation. What's your advice for a not giving up because you could have. Right. You've had you, you, six figures, multiple six yeah. figures worth of debt that you're up against. And then life like this happens. It could have been easy to say, you know, what, forget it. You know, the, the emotions of this mm -hmm. is too much for me to continue on this journey. But you decided that you were going to double down and that you were going to push through the obstacle. You're going to push through the mm -hmm. emotions of it all and not give up and not get off course. That's no easy feat. Yeah. How were you able to push through it all and still put one foot in front of the other and not give up on your goal? At the end of the day, I'm the only person that's going to be here for my baby. So I do it for her. Um, I, I could give up, but where is that going to leave her? She needs me. And so, you know, I have to keep on fighting for her. And, you know, I just, I, I've never been kind of that person that, that gives up. I'm, I'm, I'm the fighter. I'm a fighter. But she gives me a whole new purpose. I love that. I absolutely love that. Wow. And then on the other side, you're you also spoke about earlier how you're you're the blueprint. You didn't have a blueprint. You're the blueprint when it comes to this financial stuff. What has been the, kind of the reaction from those around you, yeah. family and friends, about the decisions that you're making with your money? Because just like when you first heard Dave's message, you was like, Dave, you don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so. 
People are probably looking at you like you crazy. What are you doing? You got all. Yeah. You could have. You could have did this. You could have did that. What's the noise been like from those around you? Um, it's mixed. It's mixed. Like, um, you know, I post my stuff. Like, I can post pictures of my daughter and get like uh, hundreds of likes, right? I'll post something about my finances and I'll probably get like two. And so I'm like, people really aren't even paying attention. But then when I have private conversations with people, people are like, oh, my God, I'm so encouraged by your story. I can't believe all this stuff. You've done all this stuff. Um, like, and so I'm just like, could you comment or something? So I said, I know that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't wasting my time. <laughs> and so I'm like, you know, so I've gotten that. And then I've gotten like, like from my grandfather, he's 86, bless his soul. He's my best friend. I love him to death. But he's just like, I'm like, I'm trying to get out of debt. He's like, girl, you're going to be in debt forever. I just refinanced my house, you know, like. It's like, so, you know, I'm battling with that mindset. And then on the whole other end of the spectrum, you know, like people like my dad doesn't even know that I'm even doing any of this stuff because he's not, a, he's not plugged into social media. And so the other day he was like, yeah, I recommended uh, this financial advisor talk to you. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I was like, I'm wondering what this financial advisor is even going to tell me. So the financial advisor called me and I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, my dad told me he gave you uh, my number. So what is it that you think you could do for me? Let me just give you a little bit of my backstory. And he was like, uh, I think you're okay. Um, but, you know, let me know. <laughs> he was like, let me know when you do your debt free screen. And I said, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Love so you, you talked about um, some of the things that you have done so far uh, to pay off this debt. And you said that the budget played a huge role in it. Um, what were some other things that you put into place? You know, because that's not easy having to be disciplined like that. So I'm sure that you had to cut back some things or just discipline yourself in certain areas. Yeah, it's hard. You, know, you got to understand, like, I struggle daily because I have to battle with the fact that I have my daughter at home and it's just me and her. So it's like, do I work this overtime shift when I know I'm going to make X, Y, and Z that's going to go towards my goal? Or do I stay home with my baby? You know, so that's like the biggest struggle. And, you know, we all have mom guilt and people telling me, you ain't raising your daughter. I'm your, I'm your baby's mama because I'm here with your baby. Like I've heard all of that stuff. And I'm just like, listen, at the end of the day, my baby is good. I take time out for her, but I still, but you still feel that it's nothing that's going to take that away. And so that's, that's, that's the biggest struggle, but I do make sacrifices. I cut back, you know, my budget is strict. I don't spend money um, on anything, but I, what I do spend money on is I give a lot. Um, I tithe. And, but I also just give like, and so I think that's a huge part, but I ha I'm, I'm strict on my budget. Like, no baby, you can't have that. You get a dollar and she knows that dollar. That's my dollar that I'm going to get. And that's it. Let me just say this. You are a great mother and don't let anyone make you feel otherwise. I mean, the fact what you've done even thus far shows that you're looking out for your child's future and, and your child's well being. That's a great mom, you know, and you're right. I think we all deal with some type of guilt, mom guilt, parent guilt. I mean, he works outside at home still, and sometimes he feels guilty like, oh, man, by the time I get home, the kids have to hurry up and get in the bed, and I spend enough time, and I have to deal with it as well, too. But in the end of the day, we know that we're trying to make better lives for our children, and so we don't want our children to walk in our footsteps, you know, of being in debt, and we want to pave a better way for them. So in the end, you are a great mom. I, I just had to say that. She's a great it's mom. A, it's a fact because what yeah. you're doing right now, it's a quote that we always say. It's temporary pain yeah. for the long-term gain, and so long-term gain. And what's happening right now is you're paying a price, but, man, you're going to reap, you're gonna reap it such with your rewards, baby. Yes, and you she's going to be so blessed. Yep. Because of the work that you're putting in, so you're true. working, you're working overtime, mm -hmm. you're making sacrifices, you're making sure that she's surrounded with love all at the same time, yeah. while probably lacking on a great deal of sleep <laughs> and, you know, yeah. going through the emotions of everything you're going <laughs> yeah. through in your, in your, in your, yeah. in your life. And so what you're doing right now is you're laying a foundation. <laughs> yeah. And in order to lay a foundation, you got to dig up some ground. 
uh, concrete is heavy. Yeah, you got to smooth it out. It's manual back breaking labor. And right. so you're going to feel the pain of that sometimes, but you got to keep building. And in the end, you're going to build this beautiful house for your family. That's so right. don't, don't let outside for, don't let broke people, <laughs> don't let broke <laughs> people so true. discourage you from attaining financial freedom because you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for your, your the baby as well. Yeah. And I think actually when you say broke people too, it's not that people may not even have, they might have money, but they still aren't doing anything intentional with their money. So I call those people broke people too. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Over the course of this process that you've been going through, what's been the biggest life lesson that you've taken away from it thus far? I think just the intentionality, like you have to do everything with intentionality. And even going through this process made me wake up and realize, listen, it's just not about your money. You need to get your spiritual act together, which I, which I'm doing. <laughs> I'm in the process of, and I don't think that ever stops. Right. Um, you got to get your physical fitness together. You got to get your eating habits together. And so I'm working on just becoming a greater person overall and doing everything with intentionality. And so, you know, just that's, that's it. Just live intentionally in all aspects of your life. That's great. Now, are there any book recommendations that you can recommend to our audience that um, they may need to check out? Of course, the total money makeover, I feel like is a foundational book for Dave Ramsey's program. Um, and I, I think it just totally is a total mindset shift on how you look at finances. Um, and also um, The Millionaire Next Door is an incredible book. And that just breaks down if you're a nerd and you need to know the numbers and you just don't believe what I'm saying because who am I? I'm just a nurse. You know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a nurse. I'll go ask the doctor. Right. <laughs> no. But the millionaire next door breaks down um, statistics about, you know, who is actually a millionaire and how they attain that. And I and that totally opened my eyes to a whole different world. Awesome. Awesome. Now, if there's somebody listening to the show right now who is a little less than motivated, they don't know if they have the ability to do what you've done. What you've done is incredible. It's extraordinary. And they're like, man, that's awesome for her. But my situation is this. My situation involves that. And I don't know if I have what it takes to do what Nasima did. What would you tell that person? I would say, look, anybody can do this. This is a simple plan that's laid out. Anybody can do it. You just have to do it. A lot of people um, have made like this use. Well, you make a lot of money so you could do that. I made a lot of money, but I didn't have a lot of money at the end of the day. When you make a lot of money, you spend a lot of money. So let's let's go there. And I bet you didn't have three hundred thousand dollars in debt. So let's start there. So <laughs> you know, I, I I paid a lot for my for how much money I make now. I paid that for it. Okay. So um, I just think that you I, just to encourage anybody can do it. You don't have to make a lot of money. You just have to start. And once you start, you'll, things will start falling into place for you. You'll realize that, you know, you're actually, you actually have more money than you thought. Or opportunities will come forward to you to make more money. You know, and so I think that stop blocking your blessings and just do it. So what's your goal now for the rest of the 50,000? Um, do you intend to have it paid off? Like what's, what's the range that hopefully you can have this entire debt paid off by? So I'm like really pushing myself. This is my goal. I really want this paid off by my birthday, which is May 15th. That is um, five months away. $50,000. So, you know, I, I have to push myself because I know that that, you know, that's the only way I have to challenge myself. Um, but I know I can't do that with a lot of ble- without a lot of blessings happening. But, you know, I have total faith that I can get it done. So I'll pay off. This fifty thousand dollars by May fifteenth, twenty seventeen. I'm putting that in the air. You know, let that's gonna happen. It's gonna come true. So <laughs> that's my plan. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. And you know what? We think you can get it done. Yep, <laughs> for sure. So tell our audience all about your great website, financially intentional, and how they can connect with you. 
Um, yeah, so financiallyintentional.com is my website uh, or my blog where I talk about a lot of my journey, a lot of my struggles, things that I'm doing constantly to improve. Um, and just uh, I give updates there on where I'm at and give tips to people. Um, so that's at financiallyintentional.com. Also, social media wise, um, on Facebook, Financially Intentional, and on um, Instagram, Financially Intentional. I also have a Twitter, but I've never been that big on Twitter. But those are the places that you can find me, and I'm pretty responsive. And, you know, I'm the kind of person that you can ask me anything I'm going to tell you. I keep it real. That's the only way I know how to be. So feel free to hit me up, ask me any kind of questions that you have, and I'll get back to you. Nasima, this has been great. Your story Amazing. is truly inspirational. We know that everybody tuned in right now took a great deal away from your courage. And I know that they're fired up to launch out or continue on in their journey to debt freedom as well. So thank you so much for sharing your story on the show today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm a big fan. I'm so happy. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> wow, that was super duper inspiration i mean a lot of you guys are struggling with student loans and you feel like it's a mountain that's insurmountable and that you always have a student loan payment and there's nothing that you can do well, guess what look at nasima mm -hmm. i mean she has been destroying yep. her debt and she's still on the journey but you know what yep. she's going to win that's right that's right. And you know what I love about her story? She is a single mom that is doing this. Yeah. We hear you guys all the time. We have some people that leave comments that say, you know what, can you show more single parents? And you know what, guys, there are single parents out there that are doing it and determined, okay? I think it's a misconception where you think that you have to have two incomes coming into the home in order to knock out a lot of debt. No, you can do it by yourself as well, too, guys. And we are here to help. Why don't you check us out? over at our podcast. So if you just go to hisandhermoney.com, we have a ton of other shows over there of people that are becoming debt-free. And we want to help you on your journey to debt freedom. And we created a totally free ebook just for you. It's called The Eight Essential Steps to Getting Out of Debt. You can pick up your copy by simply going to hisandhermoney.com slash eight steps. That's the number eight, hisandhermoney.com slash eight steps. Well, guys, that's all for this time. It's been great. Till next time. Peace. Bye.